Okay, so aloha everyone and welcome to this live Healing Moments program, Healing Moments with Karina. Well, oh, it says it's still preparing. Okay, so we're gonna, um, I'm gonna cut this part out. <laughs> the first part, so I look really smooth. Okay. Um, so as far as I know, I think we're moving. So I just welcome everybody to this live Healing Moments program with Karina. And we're here the first Saturday of every month. And I'm so grateful to be with you. Um, this program this month is called Mastering Your Life on Earth Now, What's It Going to Take? So I hope you um, enjoy our Healing Moments program. And I see uh, people in the, in the room that uh, are here with us every month. And uh, for those of you listening on Facebook or coming in um, later on the recording, which will be posted on, my, on YouTube and on my website, I want to welcome you to this program. Our purpose, our Healing Moments program, is dedicated to healing the self and moving forward on our evolutionary journeys of love and aging our soul. Each month, we create a space to look at life's big questions about healing and consciously creating our experience. Together, we're finding the answers, tuning into our hearts to move into the new dimensional energy. So this month's topic is mastering your life on earth now what's it going to take and uh, i'd like everyone that's here or if you're on facebook you can always um, send a message to me uh, through messenger facebook messenger i also have um you can email me at karina at karina nielsen.com or you can put it in the chat if you're here live and i'll and i'll see that so um thank you for being here what i'd like to do is begin with a with a, a prayer of intention. So just everybody, wherever you are around the world, just take a deep breath. And I'm gonna guide you through a short version of the five breath self-healing meditation, this wonderful healing uh, technique that we have from my mentor, Colin Fritz Sterling. So everybody, when you breathe, you breathe in through your crown, golden particles, and send it down through the pineal. In the in-breath, it turns into white light, and you draw it into your heart, and then you lock it and weave all four bodies together. And on the exhale, it goes up to your shoulders and through your arms and down out your arms. So take a breath like that. It's just like a dolphin breath, yeah? And then whoosh, exhale it. And for the first position, we're going to put our right palm on the top of your head, on the crown, and Left palm on top. Now breathe in and just feel it. And send it into your whole cranium and just allow that healing light to flow through you. The next one is at your eyes. So place your palms or your or your fingers, your index and middle finger over your eyes. Breathe in as before. Exhale and just feel that relaxing, healing light. Next position is at your heart muscle on the left side of your chest with thumbs pointing up. Breathe in, lock it, and send that light through your heart into your whole chest. And the next position is at your third chakra, right at your stomach. Breathe into your heart, lock it, and send it through your stomach into your whole abdomen. And the last, the fifth position is at your lower chakra, your second chakra, all the way down to the, the bottom of your torso. Breathe in and send love into this whole lower chakra area. And in this light of beauty and love, I call upon the creator force of all love and light. And I ask you, creator force, to hold us in your golden particles of love this day. For all of us are midst in this healing of the great shift in consciousness. And now we see it all around us, whereas previously we might have doubted and felt like, wow, what is, what is she talking about? Or what are they talking about, great shift? 
but we see it now and we know our lives will never be the same, but that we are moving forward in love with intention. And so for this program today, I pray that all the technical and all the content be of the highest light vibration and that we are in service here to ourselves, to Mother Earth, and to everyone on the planet because we're creating a collective consciousness of love and healing. And so it is in love. Amen. Okay. So that is the beginning of our program. <laughs> I hope you're still with me. That was just a beautiful breathing and, and healing prayer. So I want you to know that the, the Q&A is on at any time and I'll keep an eye on Messenger and I'll keep an eye on what's going on on uh, Facebook, hopefully. Um, the topic, of course, is mastering your life on Earth now. What's it going to take? Because as I don't have to tell anyone about the incredible dynamic energies that are happening right now on our planet. And as I said in the um, preamble on my website to this, to this uh, program, we're midst in the throes of a global pandemic and outrage over a per perpetual system of inequality in the U.S. and around the world. So how can choosing love over fear help us to evolve and master our lives on Earth? And here we are in the mastery month of June. It's the sixth month and sixth in the Lemurian numerology is the number for mastery. So what a perf perfect timing uh, as usual with the numerology. And at a time when so much is uncertain, one thing is certain. We still have a choice of how we think and feel about what's going on inside of us and all around us. So I quoted Viktor Frankl, who wrote a book called Man's Search for Meaning, and he is a survivor of the Holocaust and lived as, as a child uh, through the Holocaust and was interned. And he said, everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedom to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. We have an opportunity at this time to choose to master our third dimensional journeys that we're experiencing now and move ourselves into a higher awareness of love. And in doing so, we join a rising collective consciousness of possibilities and change. So this is what I see when I uh, look out through the media, of course, because um, it's happening around the world, this, this force of, of global change and awareness of um, ingrained inequalities in systematic inequalities that have been ingrained for centuries. That finally, with the rising vibration, the collective consciousness of love on this planet, and, I'm, and I'm, may I say the, the younger generations that are now questioning why things are this way and um, just saying, we don't agree with that basically, you know, this is ridiculous to go on in this manner. So um, let's consider now how we can tell, how we can move personally our lives from fear into love. And uh, I'm also gonna um, refer to the channeling this month from Goddess Sophia which is called Mastery at the Time of COVID-19. What does it mean for you? And I would, I would say also at the time of George Floyd, rest in peace, who, who became a martyr and a, and a symbol for the inequality, systematic inequality for people of color around the world. And so I wanna take your questions at any time. Um, Let's talk a little bit, and if you have shares about this, because some of you might have six. We're going to talk about the numerology a little bit, but you might have six as a, um, a life path number. And a life path number, if you don't know what that is, the Lemurian numerology, and I have a, a page on that on my website at KarinaNielsen.com. And this is the uh, Lemurian wisdom brought through Kahu Fred Sterling from Master Guide Carol. Who's my, who are my guides uh, in this lifetime and many others. And uh, they are the source of uh, 
the Lemurian wisdom that I resonate to in my life. So the, the Lemurian numerology in that, I've said that it's mastery. So the six is you're on your way to mastering or have mastered a situation and are ready to move on. Mastering something means that you have acquired deep understanding and that the lesson is complete. So we are already in mastery. So we've already mastered a lot of the upheaval that you see now um, is, a, is a force of mastery, a force of wanting to move on to the new awareness of love. So how can we use this mastery focus in our own lives to move ourselves from fear to love? So I feel the greatest thing that we can do at this time is to, of course, meditate. I'm always going to tell you to meditate and to, to pray prayers of intention and gratitude. Of course, gratitude is always wonderful, but also the intention of what you want to create in your life. But in your meditations, meditate on what do you, what do you feel called to do from your heart in love? Where is love guiding you right now, your love? And a lot of times we live our lives from fear. We grow up in fear. We, we know that, oh, don't, you know, don't touch the stove because you're gonna burn yourself. That's probably one of the first ones we get. But there's all kinds of fears that are built into our lives. And how can we start to move beyond the ingrained, inherent, endemic fears that we have not only in us, but in our societies? So let's start with the self and let's find out where we can release the fears and choose love now. Let love guide us. So that for me is a mastery focus for this month. And it's, a, it's an intense month also if you know any astrologers, and I dabble in it myself a little bit, but we're now in an eclipse window. The first uh, lunar eclipse happened um, yesterday. And that window between eclipses is a long one, and it goes until July uh, 4th or 5th. Is the, the, there's a solar eclipse on June 21st, and then this final lunar eclipse at the beginning of July. This is what some people call an eclipse cauldron. <laughs> I like to call it a window, it sounds a little bit, because it, they are opportunities for change. And it brings wild card energies in that um, allow for opportunities that might not have been there before. So when we choose love in this type of an energy, we're going to, we're going to facilitate healing in our own lives. And isn't that why we're here, basically? We're all here to heal ourselves and to age our souls. And um, go ahead and ask your questions because I'm gonna pour it out now because aging our souls is what I believe we come here to do. So we come into, these li into this lifetime with a blueprint, a life plan that we set up before we came here. And that allows us to plan into our lives those things that we want to experience, those things that we want to learn that we might have missed in past lifetimes. And yes, I am talking about reincarnation in multiple lifetimes because I believe we have them and I hope you do too because we get an opportunity to try again and to age our souls. So aging our souls means we come in at a, perhaps into a third dimensional yin yang awareness at a lower soul level that where we want to experience anything that can be experienced in a third dimensional world. And gradually over the lifetimes, we learn that, okay, I've done that. Now I want to raise my frequency of love and experience more love, more healing. And when that, we become middle-aged souls or older middle-aged souls or even older souls, which we've seen on this planet occasionally. So we all have an opportunity to work through our blueprint and to age our souls and to find more love. Now, this blueprint is very important, and I've said that to a uh, healy that I had um, to probably come in on the recording this past week, is we have um, a special opportunity in this lifetime on earth now because we're in a great shift in consciousness. And we incarnated at this time with intention to experience and incarnate great shifts 
and great shift means, and I mean, I'm going to tell you what it means, but we're living it, folks. So you, you could probably tell me what it looks like in your life, but it, it simply means we're moving from that third dimensional yin-yang, good, bad, up and down, back and forth, uh, fear to love journey, and raising the frequency of the planet, Mother Earth is shifting with us, and the frequency within our whole, own hearts, creating a collective consciousness on the planet that allows you, allows the whole Earth to rise to a higher frequency of love to enlightenment. So from fear to love, to love to enlightenment. And that opens us to the fourth dimension and the fifth dimension. So if that's not enough for you, we're in the midst of it. And of course, you're going to see energies um, that prefer to stay in the third dimensional focus, prefer to stay in fear. But then on the other hand, you also might see those that have been in fear resonating more and more in love. And that's what I've seen in the last few days uh, around the world where people who previously might have been stoic in certain uh, uh, ways of thinking are starting to allow love to inform their opinions much more. So I think it's a, it's a beautiful time. And I'm really grateful for, for all of your presence with me in my lifetime now. We've just come off of uh, basically, and I see two of the people uh, with us in, in the, uh, the room right now that were in the first steps for Signature Cell Healing, Healing the Cell program. Uh, and it was a, a six hour, three part series on Zoom. And we had a great group of uh, healers and light workers from around the planet. Uh, it was primarily uh, originally done to reach our the Signature Cell Healing, um, those that wanted to attend the workshops in the Netherlands uh, this summer, which were, were postponed, uh, and we created a series to begin that process of, of uh, bringing the new signature cell healing to the Netherlands. So we had, you know, 11 or 12 people, 13 or so from the Netherlands, but then we had a number of people from Australia and from Japan and from uh, the UK and uh, various other places that, uh, that joined us, and it was just a great group of people. So we now have, very fortunately, good recordings from those sessions, and they're available on SignatureCellHealing.com as a, as a um, self-study series. So you can actually purchase it on SignatureCellHealing.com. It's a subscription, um, and you can get the self-healing bundle, which is worth $36. And that self healing, digital self healing bundle has ebooks and video tutorials and MP3s that you can use to study through the video series. So, I mean, the whole thing turned out really great uh, live anyway. And now it's available to anyone who wants to, to uh, participate in it now because the timing might not have been optimal for where you are. So, Check that out at, at SignatureCellHealing.com. It was, it was just a lot of fun. And uh, I learned a lot about Zoom <laughs> and how to coordinate things. And hopefully today I'm learning about, um, about uh, doing the, the healing moments live. Um, okay, so I think I've got a question here from in the messenger chat from uh, Aldine. Thank you very much. And um, I've got a question here. She says, how might we use the cosmic energies we currently are experiencing, the eclipses, the solstice, the retro planets, yes, there's all of that too, to move us forward in love? Now, let's look at those. Um, first of all, the retro planets, the retrograde planets. Now, retrograde, just briefly, because I, um, I'm not an expert on astrology, but I dabble in it. And I have a fun seeing how the, the, the energies in the, in the celestial energies are a reflection of what's going on on our planet. And our planet, what's going on in our planet reflects the celestial energy. So it's a mirror effect, really. It's not a cause and effect. It's just happening. So 
um, the retro retrograde planets for me, and of course Mercury will go retrograde this month as well. And there are many planets retrograde right now. Uh, uh, Venus, Venus is one of them. Oh my goodness, there's a lot of retrograde planets. Uh, but for me, it's a time to shift out of our regular way of thinking. We usually use our right brain primarily to process through the third, our third dimensional lives and what we do in this world. It's a time to shift into our left brain and be more reflective, be more creative. So re retrograde, people often say, uh, you know, reflect, uh, uh, retire, <laughs> not retire, anything was re, you know, start to, start to uh, move into a reflective state where we might use meditation, sending love, um, reflecting on our own personal journey. So the retrograde time doesn't necessarily have to be a time of, of chaos or things like that. I think it's a time to pull back and to um, consider. And that fits really well in the eclipse window, the energy of, um, uh, you know, when old entrenched energies, such as we're seeing in the third third dimensional world that we've had on earth for thousands, thousands of years. When those start to um, become aware that it's the end of those times, that it's a time for a great shift and a movement into new dimensional energies, a planetary shift, those energies can, um, it can feel chaotic when you're not centered in love. So when we're centered in love, and for those of you who are working in your goddess light, when you're centered in your heart and in your goddess light, that's where you find the centeredness. That's where you find the balance. And the role of the goddess light that are incarnate on earth now, and I'm talking about all the female energies, whether you're aware of it or not, and very many of the men uh, who are becoming consciously aware of the goddess light within them. This is the time to raise your frequency of love and create, join in uh, an etheric centering of the planet. So that means bringing your goddess light frequency of love higher up. And that doesn't mean you go up like that. I feel it's an inward movement that we get into our hearts. And there, that's where we connect with other goddess lights on the planet or people on earth um, that are seeking to understand what's going on right now. So there'll be many people that don't understand or have never heard the word great shift in consciousness. Although I think I said this a while back that I was reading a, a columnist that I read um, weekly in the New York Times. His name is David Brooks. And he's a conservative comment, uh, commentator, although I think he's very uh, reflective of what's going on with people in the United States. He travels a lot and meets people. He actually used in one of his columns uh, in the last month or so, the term great shift in consciousness. And I almost fell out of my chair because this is what um, Kahu and Master Guy Kirill have been talking about since the 80s. <laughs> 1980s and I joined Kahu in the 1990s. So I mean, it seemed far out to me in those days and my family thought I had fallen off the edge. But it, you know, it doesn't seem so wild now. And when David Brooks with the New York Times uses the great shift in consciousness, then it probably is a great shift in consciousness and more and more people are becoming aware of it. However, as I was saying, there will be some that are not um, cognizant or, or really uh, befuddled or um, in fear about what's going on around them. And hearkening back to what my quote from Viktor Frankl uh, about choosing how we see the world around us and what's happening to us. Um, it's a choice now to be in love. And you see that playing out, of course, on the news. What are the choices that we make when we have an opportunity to talk about what's going on? What are the, what are the choices? Do we choose to come from our hearts or is it just a, 
a kind of a knee-jerk reaction of, you know, saying things the way they've been said before. And I think older people my age, older people, I'm an older person now, right? So people in the 60s, in my, in my 60s now, right? So I'm looking at these young kids, I'm thinking, man, when I was, when I was in um, grade school and high school, I mean, we were protesting the Vietnam War, we were protesting Nixon and Oh my goodness, it was a radical world. And I'm thinking there is a lot of support right now for, um, in general, a, a change for what's been going on on this, on this uh, in, in our country, in the United States, speaking for me, myself as an American. I feel like more of a Hawaiian because this is my home. Um, but it is the United States, so let's talk about that. But I, I just feel that it's a global shift. Um, what's happening here in the United States is is uh, is indicative of um, inequality and ancient systems. So getting back to the um, getting back to what Mahina Ku was asking about the, the planetary um, what you call it the cosmic energies, right? The cosmic celestial energies. I would like to also point out that the the planet the the conjunctions that we've had of the large major planets of Jupiter, Saturn, uh, and uh, Pluto uh, are uh, huge, huge shifting cycles when those planets come together, especially Saturn and Pluto, um, just entrenched energies of systems that have gone on for, for years. And this has to do with um, the, all the energies in Capricorn and that being the, you know, the structure of government and society. Um, we're in, this is also indicative of that great shift uh, of consciousness. So I hope that that's a little bit about the celestial energies. Um, really, when you come down to it, you can really just say it in a concise way and just say it's all about love. It's all about every one of us finding the love within us. And it's about self-love first. So we can't avoid uh, things that are going on for us on the physical, the emotional, mental, and spiritual bodies. This is a four, we're, we come here in a four body experience. So you might have something going on with you in your physical um, body, you know, you might have pain or, or uh, disease or things like that going on, emotional problems uh, where you, you just, uh, for, you know, you there might be people locking down on their emotions. They don't want to feel what's going on for them in relationships or whatever. Mental stress, you put yourself under a lot of mental stress and a disconnect from our spiritual world. So how do we do that? We begin by bringing love into our hearts, into the physical. And as Kahu Fred always has said in, in his workshops, the ones that, that he's honored me to do now, it's about healing backwards from the physical to the emotional to the mental and to the spiritual so bring the love into your heart and allow that to permeate out through the four bodies and in that we awaken our chromosomes of youth and vitality and we bring the love into every cell and that activates a cellular consciousness of healing and that um, awakens us to a new level of love Okay, so I, I see something just came up in the, the chat here from, um, ah, I'm starting to answer, Sandra says I'm starting to answer her question. And so, Sandra, what was your question? Please write it in. Um, I'm, if I'm only starting, maybe I can continue. Um, also, um, oh, yes, I'm sorry. Um, Mahina Ku has pointed out that when I talked about the retrograde planets, I said, um, I, I meant to say, from the left brain to the right brain, right? So our world is generally in the left brain and we're in the retrograde time, we move to the more creative opportunity of being in the right brain. Thank you very much, appreciate that. Um, so Sandra, if you want to, oh, here it is. Um, okay, so if we don't quite know what aspect or issue within our lives to choose to try to master, can we ask our higher selves to choose this for us or do we need to have a strong intention? 
let me just start with that right there because uh, what a beautiful question. First of all, Sandra, thank you so much. And um, I, I, I want to get back. Where was where was the part where I wanted to say yes and slam dunk it? <laughs> yes, we can ask our higher selves um, for assistance and guidance and align with our higher selves. I think that's part of the mastery focus of this month. The mastery is aligning with our higher self. And the higher self is the part of us that's not incarnate. And when we do that, we connect through our spiritual bodies into a higher vibration, uh, an energy that has a higher perspective on what's going on for us on earth. So aligning with your higher self, Sandra, is a super way of doing it. So ask your higher self um, to guide you or to enlighten or to light your path going forward. If that's the only intention that you have, please light my, my path forward in love so that I can take the steps to heal. That's a pretty awesome intention. And um, then the second part of that question was, uh, or do we need to have a strong intention? I think it's both because you, it's not that you need to, it's good to have a strong intention um, because I think that gives the guidance a clarity of our focus and it, and it focuses the energy on what you want to heal. So, and it doesn't have to be really super defined. And so if you're having trouble with the clarity on your intention, what if you just said, um, I am more and more in love with myself every day. How would that be? I, I think I'll have that one. <laughs> um, you know, I, I bring more and more love into my heart every day because as we do, that, that, that's going to put the steps in front of us. Then we're going to see our next step. I, I don't believe that we have to know exactly what the next step is. I think we have to have a, a vision for how we want our lives to be. So maybe Sandra, if you could, you know, you, you say, I want to have a, uh, you know, just off the top of my head, you know, anything, you know, beautiful house, uh, loving relationships. Um, I want to meet the man of my dreams. I want to, um, you know, the things, you know, take the limits off your vision and create a vision or an intention uh, for your life that um, that you really desire, you desire from your heart, and um, and and then just say, light my path. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold this vision and I'm gonna visualize that every day. Uh, it's called a mastermind statement or a mastermind, you know, created with your higher self. So I think that's beautiful. And then um, then she said, going on, if the latter is true, which is the strong intention. The problem, however, for some of us is that we seem to have too much to master. <laughs> I like that. That's good. But it's often hard to prioritize for a number of reasons. Obviously, with some of us, like myself, healing from physical ailments seem as though this should be a priority, but not necessarily. Well, I think if I had a lot of pain in my physical body, in fact, I've, I've been through that. I've had sciatic nerve for a couple of years. <laughs> it's just I mean, it's bad, folks, and back pain and whatever. I mean, that was a priority for me. <laughs> so, no, I don't blame you, you know. Put a priority on what you feel is really important. And I think if you have physical, something going on physically, you want to breathe and do the five breath self-healing meditation every uh, two, three times a day. I heard somebody uh, did, did it for um, five times a day recently, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, that's important to heal, I would say. And I know when I had um, the back pain, I had awful, awful back pain. Um, I had splinters coming in like crazy. And you can read about that on my website. <laughs> when you, what is it getting a splinter? Um, I, I, I took the guidance from Master Guide Carol, who said to me, uh, when you get up in the morning, the first thing you do, you know, when you wake up, if you got back pain, sometimes you can't even move in bed without it being painful. 
So the first thing you do when you open your eyes is say to yourself, I feel great. And you know how Master Kira would say that, right? I feel great. I feel great, great, great. And so I started doing that. And when I turned to my side, you know how you got to roll, when you have back pain, they teach you how to get up or, you know, you roll to the side and then you push yourself up with one, one arm. And um, I kept saying that to myself, I feel great. I feel great. I feel really good today. I feel good today. I'm telling you what you focus on, and it's going back to Viktor Frankl, you know, we have a choice to choose to focus on what's going wrong with our lives or what's going wrong with the world or what's going right with the world. I have to say that's one thing I, I humbly admire from our, our Lemurian president, Barack Obama. I will always call him my Lemurian president because he, he's from here, right? Um, focus on the good in the world and focus on the good in your life. So Sandra, if you got a physical ailment or something that's really in pain, find something, anything in your lives, even in your life, even if it's like a beautiful tree growing outside your house and it's flowering now, or the birds are singing, or um, you know, you've got one toe on your left foot that feels good. I feel like I'm, I'm talking like Carl Fred, yeah. He used to say this because that's what he did when he had his stroke and he was in the ICU and he couldn't move at all. The only, and they told him, typical stroke victim, he's never going to walk again. He's never going to talk again. And he heard that. He thought, oh, my God, they're talking about me, right? Well, imagine he could only move the one toe, one of his toes on, on his right leg or on his right foot or something. But he focused on that and started breathing. And look where he is now. He's come back. I mean, this, this was, geez, what was that? 2006? That's 14 years ago. So he, from that, just focusing on that one good thing, he could expand the energy of love within him. And the guidance had something to focus, something positive. So when we, I've, I've found that when we go into a negative space, and I've been in negative spaces where I really got angry or I got fearful or I thought, oh my God, what am I going to do now? It's horrible. Um, the guidance pulls back. You know, the angels will take a step back and they're going to allow us to experience that fear because that's what we came here to do. We came here to heal from fear to love. So if we're constantly focused on what's wrong in our lives, we're going we're gonna to find that the guidance is not as present with us as they could be. So guidance will come to us when we have a positive focus. So yes, focus on something good. So when you get up in the morning, you can say that I feel great, great, great. Even if you, if, if you don't, even if it's kind of stretching, what you feel is your reality at that time. Because what this is about is creating a new reality based on love and a consciousness of raising our frequency on the planet. And it starts with us, folks. It, it starts with each one of us going into our hearts and feeling something good, feeling something good and seeing something good out there and let it be reflective of something good in here in our hearts. So Sandra, that is an awesome set of questions there. Um, and, uh, and she said, oh, that's great. And she's also um, doing that great, great, great in the morning. You can kind of laugh about it too, Sandra, because I was, I was laughing. I mean, I didn't say it too loudly because, you know, my, I don't want to wake up my husband. I get up early. But I would say it quietly to myself. I feel great, great, great. <laughs> you just imagine that. Um, um, okay, so getting back to that, I just want to... Um, Oh, what a, what a great set of questions, Sandra. I'm really grateful for that. So what else did we want to talk about today? Any other questions, please, you know, put them in the chat or you can even raise your hand. Um, I also wanted to, um, just while we have, we're kind of moving from topic to topic, um, I want to thank the people at Sedona Journal of Emergence because they're, uh, uh, they're uh, we got somebody coming in. Grace is going to come in now. 
Hi, Grace. Aloha. Um, we've got everybody's uh, camera off on mute and muted people. So um, welcome. Um, I just wanted to thank the people in the Sedona Journal for um, putting the channeling uh, my channeling uh, article there in the June 2020 issue. I'm really grateful. They're wonderful people. And uh, also wanted to remind you that you can sign up for newsletters on my website uh, at karinanielsen.com. Um, I wanted to take a moment, if, if you don't mind, to talk about that um, wonderful channeling from Goddess Sophia uh, that came through called Mastery at the Time of COVID. 19 what does it mean to you um, and if you that um that article is on my website on you know, there's a link to it uh, from the home page um you eventually it'll show up in the sedona journal but w what a timely article uh and and about you know mastery requires change and evolution. So in this month of mastery, in the sixth energy, we are, we are mastering, mastering our blueprints, but in order to do that, what we need is change within ourselves. So you can't master something by doing things the same all the time. So if any of you are a number six life path number, you're gonna know what I'm, what I'm talking about, that it's a, uh, it's it's a it's an energy that requires change and movement forward so wherever you are right now consider that and like kahu has said in um in a number of gatherings recently set your mind forward in love so if you continue to go backwards and you you maybe you're saying i never go backwards what do you mean i don't go backwards i'm going forward i'm going back but then when you think about um, relationships that you've had in the past or, you know, old animosities that happened before, or if you think about, well, I've always done it that way and it seems to be working and, you know, it's probably never going to get any better. You know, that's, that's going backwards. Um, also, if something really, you know, something really tragic happens, I mean, it's, there's nothing wrong with, uh, having a look at it and praying and meditating and feeling um, the emotions of it. But at, you, we need to, in order to master it, we go forward from that event. We go forward in love. And that is how we master. So getting back to Goddess Sophia, in, she was talking about, uh, from a, a question there, the presence of the coronavirus everywhere on earth is forcing me to look at self-love in all aspects of my life. Everything is changing. And with a family that I need to take care of, I'm just trying to deal with life one day at a time. And, and this person asked for the guidance about it. So Sophia's guidance was self-love in the times of the coronavirus means is making its mark on earth, means making the changes to care for yourself so you can be there for others when you need to be. Self-love must come first. So what does self-love mean for you? Because that's where you're gonna find mastery. What does self-love mean for you? And each one of us has a different answer to that question. It could be something on the physical, the emotional, the mental, or the spiritual body. And I'm praying that we all can find the essence of self-mastery this month. Um, she also talks about, and, and we have a, a few moments left and there's not a whole lot of questions. I'm wondering if you wanna do a short meditation at the end of this, um, of this um, program here today. We could probably do that. So let's, let's um, everybody get comfortable. I'm just getting back to, um, Messenger, okay. So um, I just want, before we go, I'll just uh, go into that meditation. I'll just um, read a comment from, from Sandra. Um, uh, to me, moving from fear to love within a basis of truth is so important right now because we seem to continue to be manipulated and thus deceived by our media 
to move us in certain directions that we wouldn't necessarily choose to move if we knew the true facts. But moving more out of the darkness and into the light without sufficient presence of love won't necessarily help us find truth. Well, um, that's an interesting statement because for me, the word truth is synonymous with love. So for me, I cannot find truth unless it's in love. So if it doesn't feel like love to me, then there's some element of fear in it. And think about that because that's, a, you know, when you begin to study the 10 principles of consciously create, creating, that's um, uh, from Kahu Fritz Sterling, Master Guide Carol. Um, there's a great book on it and great um, MP3s uh, at the Signature Cell Healing online store, signaturecellhealing.com. Um, and also there's a synopsis on my website of 10 principles. But the first principle is truth. And truth to me could as well be written as love. So when we get into our hearts and we feel the love, we'll know what the truth is for us. So everybody's gonna have a version of their own truth. But we, each of us, need to know what is truth for us in our hearts and it won't be somebody won't be something that somebody tells you is the truth it will be or not the truth it will be the the truth that you feel in your heart in love and i agree with you sandra this is the time when we need to go into our hearts and ask ourselves is that the truth for me can i feel the love in that and in that we will um perhaps unplug from social media or from the news occasionally. I mean, we all have our favorite outlets for where we get our information about what's going on. But I think it's very helpful to be discerning. And to be discerning means to go into your heart and not play one off against the other. Then as soon as we do, we're back in the yin and yang again. So there is a truth that resonates in the balance of love that has no opposites. So as soon as you find yourself going and saying, this is truth or this is not truth, you're back in the third dimensional world. <laughs> so that's a really huge indicator. So when we can feel a balanced love in our hearts, and you know, I'm not saying that's easy to do. I, I'm working on it all the time finding out what is love for me and what is the truth. And bottom line is it comes down to self-love first. So thank you so much, Sandra, for always, as always, for your questions and your, and your, um, your shares. So we have a few more minutes. So everybody just get comfortable. Okay, I'm gonna, this is a special little meditation and it's a healing meditation that you can use anytime you want. Um, you do your five breath self healing meditation first. And if you don't know how to do it, please go to signaturecellhealing.com and you can look at the, um, there's a trailer that shows you um, what you will find on the video tutorial. And the video tutorial is like $9.99 and it's an unlimited subscription and you can just watch how it's done. And um, so anyway, do your five breath self healing meditation first. So imagine we've done that. So close your eyes and just start breathing. Okay, now feel the energy come into your heart and just center yourself in your heart space. Breathe and draw it down to your heart. Let all the thoughts go about anything that's going on outside of you right now. And just bring it all, bring your love inside of you and center in your heart. Let go of the thoughts of you know, where you've been already today and what's going to happen tomorrow and just come right here right now. 
Now I want you to send a light of your heart, from your heart, down into the core of Mother Earth. Now just feel yourself going down, down, down into this beautiful energy of our planet, a planet that loves us so very dearly. Send your light down, and there's a crystal core of light there. And just take that light and send your light into it. Now draw your light, merged with this crystal light from Mother Earth, and bring it back up into your heart. And now send the light up from your heart through your crown chakra and up into the etheric light around Mother Earth. So go up, 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 and keep going until you come to the edge of the atmosphere where the blue turns to black. And just hover there a minute. And from that, from that perspective, from that vantage point, you can see our beautiful blue planet and all the clouds and all the continents and all the formations of our planet. You can't see the borders. You can't see the people. You just see this beautiful planet. And now I'd like to see you to see before you on the black, but like a screen. And on your left, what you're going to see is your four bodies. You see your physical body on the left. However you choose to see that, you might just see it as a particle of, of golden light, a golden particle. And next to it, you see your emotional body. Now, when I see this, I see kind of a, a, a weave of, of pastel colors and forms and shapes, and it's kind of morphing. And then next to that, you're going to see your mental body. And for me, I see that like a network. Um, of, of almost like an electrical grid that's hooked into the, the omni consciousness of all light. And then next to that, see your spiritual body, and you might just see it as a, a, a beam of light of certain color or a, a, a giant, uh, like a sun or something like that. Just see your four bodies now. Breathe and Love each one. Look at each one and love it. Send it your love from your heart. Just love each part of you. And as you start to feel each part of you, the four bodies, begin to create a figure eight weave. And you can start with your spiritual body. So from your weave your spiritual body and make it a figure eight that's lying on its side an infinity symbol, and weave on one loop is your spiritual body, the other loop is the mental body. So spiritual body, the mental body. And you find a balance in the center. And do the same with your emotional and your physical body. Weave it, weave it, weave it. One part has the emotional, the other part has the physical. Now bring, as you balance those, those each two bodies, Bring it into a big loop of a figure eight infinity symbol. The physical and the emotional and the mental and the spiritual. And just find a balance in the center where the two lines cross for the infinity symbol. Imagine your center in the very center of that and draw your energy into it. And I'm just going to give you a few moments here now to just feel into the center of that balance of your four bodies, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, weaving together. Just feel that light now and breathe into it and see, do you stay there or is there somewhere that you go? Is there an opening that's created now for you? Breathe a moment. Feel it, relax, relax, relax into this energy.
All right, now as you feel your balanced light, take this into your heart and know that it's always there for you. You have that balance of four bodies within you. So take it down now back into your heart and feel yourself beginning to go back to the planet, going from the blue, black, all the way back down to Mother Earth. Back into your home or wherever you're listening to this program. Come back and join us here again. So I know that might require a little time to get some people to come back from that. So I just want to say, um, because we're coming to the end of our time for this, this month on the Healing Moments program, that um, we'll be back again. Um, on July 4th, the first Saturday of July, which is, of course, a holiday here, but I can't think of a better day to join with everybody um, on that morning. Um, please uh, visit my website at uh, karinanielsen.com and also signaturecellhealing.com, where you'll find the new First Steps to Signature Cell Healing online series of self-study course that I created with uh, good people Bowen and Thomas Clerks in the Netherlands. Um, oh, I also want to mention that our next healing meditation for Mother Earth is going to be July 1st, 2020. So that'll be before our next program. So I hope that you can join us in that. I wanted to get that out because that's, uh, that's going to be uh, coming up before we talk again. So um, I wish all of you a great month of mastery. I know that all of us are, are midst in this great shift in consciousness, and it's an amazing time to be on the planet. Imagine that we all choose to, chose to be here at this very special time. And there's so much that I can find in my life to heal, um, and uh, it's being presented to me daily. I'm so grateful for the opportunity. Um, to heal uh, the blueprint that I came here to heal. And I pray that all of you will find the opportunities as well. I'm, I'm grateful um, to hear from you at any time, Karina at karinanielsen.com. Um, please um, let me know how you're doing, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Um, aloha to everyone, and mahalo for being with us.